Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on analyzing monitoring reports. Today I'm going to talk about baseline reports, and then I'm going to move on to just reports in general. I have a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. And of course, I'm going to begin by talking about baselines. How do you know what constitutes good network performance and what indicates that an issue is about to happen? This is where baseline documentation comes into play. Baseline documentation provides a snapshot of the network when it is running efficiently, at least hopefully when it's running efficiently. Baselines are usually kept as a log file at the minimum, baselines should be established on CPU utilization and network bandwidth utilization. You may also base mark other functions as you deem them to be relevant. Network administrators should perform periodic tests against the baseline to check to see if the baseline has changed. They will change over time. And in order for network administrators to know what constitutes good performance on their network, their baselines need to be current. You can use Window Performance Monitor to help establish the baselines for your network. Let's talk about some of the items that should be considered for baseline reports. First up is network device CPU utilization. Knowing the CPU utilization on a piece of equipment can help to determine when a network device is going to fail. If your CPU utilization is constantly at 100%, you know there's a problem. That problem may be that it's going to fail, or it may be that you need to install more network devices to take care of a growing network. But you won't really know that if you're not baselining the CPU utilization. Network device memory utilization should also be baseline. It can help to determine when it is time to expand the memory of a network device. A good item for baselining is bandwidth utilization. This can help to determine the overall health of a network. It can help to determine when network segmentation should occur. It can also help to determine if a network device is about to fail particularly if it's creating a storm of data. Baseline utilization reports can help identifying when a security breach has occurred. You might want to consider baselining your storage device utilization. This can help to determine when storage utilization has become a bottleneck on the network, where your storage device is actually causing the network to slow down because there's too much data being pushed into it which means that baselining your storage utilization can help determine when to increase the storage capacity of that network. You might also want to baseline your wireless channel utilization. This can help to determine how saturated the wireless channels have become. Once it's been determined that your wireless channels are saturated, a new wireless access point can be installed to alleviate the pressure and then you need to create a new baseline for wireless channel utilization. This baseline can also help to determine if there is unauthorized wireless access occurring on your wireless network, especially if there is utilization on a channel that is not supposed to have any utilization. Now let's move on to analyzing reports. Before we talk about analyzing reports, let's talk about log file management. Log files can accumulate data quickly, and unfortunately, some administrators only review log files after a major problem has occurred. In most situations, this is a case of too much information at the wrong time. Good administrators will set the proper reporting levels with their logging software. They won't be logging all that debug information, that level seven information, unless of course they're actively debugging a system or application. Good administrators will review log files and compare them against their baseline documentation. They do this to find issues while the issues are still minor and before they become major. 
Log files should also be kept and archived in case there is a need for historical data. When you do archive your log files, you should follow the organization's data storage policy. Something to consider is that you may want to create running graphs of important metrics that are captured by log files. Graphing the data gives a quick visual reference, making it easier to spot issues and trends. Many logging applications give the administrator the option of creating those graphs easily and quickly, but then again, they don't do you any good if you don't review them on a regular basis. If you're having an issue with a router or link, one of the first things that you want to do is you want to run an interface report. Now, when you're reviewing the output from the interface report, the first line is usually a report on the status of the link or that interface. If it says something like fast ethernet is up, line protocol is up, that's all good. That means that interface is up and active and a link has been established. If it says fast ethernet zero slash zero is up, line protocol is down, guess what? All is not good. The interface is administratively set up, but it is not able to communicate with the other end of the link. And there are several different issues that may be the cause there. If that first line says fast ethernet zero slash zero is down, line protocol is up, all is not good. This down up status indicates that there is an issue on your end of the connection. In most cases, that's going to be a cable issue or with the physical port itself. And your final status option is fast ethernet is down, line protocol is down. If you see that, all is not good, but also all is not bad, at least not yet. The issue here is that the interface has been administratively shut down. If you want that interface up, you need to issue the command to bring that interface up and then check the status report again. If the link status of the interface indicates that there are no problems, as in it's in an up and up state, but something is not operating correctly, then it's time to dig a little bit deeper into that interface monitoring report. There are a lot of things that can happen on a network device's interface to cause issues. In most cases, you will be required to log into the device and run the device's report to determine the cause of any problems on that interface. One of the main culprits for creating an issue on an interface are speed and duplex settings. If there is a speed mismatch, the devices will not connect, and it's highly likely that your status will be in an up line protocol down state. If a duplex mismatch has occurred, this will cause intermittent issues. You will need to look at the errors counter in the output or input reports. You also need to look at the counter for dropped packets. If the device is discarding incoming packets, then more than likely the device's CPU is being overutilized. So you may need another device or that device is about to fail. If the device is dropping outgoing packets, then there is a bandwidth congestion issue on that interface. If the interface resets counter keeps going up, that means that the interface keeps resetting itself. The most likely cause is a communications issue between the two endpoints that's forcing that interface to reset. Now that concludes this session on analyzing monitoring reports. I briefly talked about baseline reports and then I moved on to other reports that you should be analyzing to take care of problems before they occur. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.